What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. So as you can see today we are inside the 2015 Dodge Dart. We're going to be doing a little bit of interior work before we go ahead and start putting the headliner back in as we've gotten this car back from the shop and all of the roof damage is fixed. So the first thing we're going to be doing is removing this center console and the reason we're going to be doing this is because I want to replace this parking brake handle because it looks like the previous owner who had this car before me scuffed this material up this leather here pretty badly so I want to replace this handle. We have a new one so in order to do that we need to take out this entire console, remove this boot around the shifter and probably take off this bezel around the climate controls here. So we're going to get right in, get that started, get this whole center console taken out, and I'll show you the process of what we'll have to go through to get that done. So once we have that rear 10 millimeter bolt removed on either side, one here and one here, as well as each of those little plastic covers that cover the bolt cavity, this console is loose and ready to move. You can see it here. I believe the only thing holding it in is this bezel around the instrument cluster here with the climate controls and the radio controls. So we're going to work on removing this, this whole piece all the way down here, all the way around and up the driver's footwell here with the ignition all removes is one panel. I've had this out before, so that's the only reason I know. So we're gonna work on getting that out, and then this whole unit should slide out. I believe the shifter stays with it, but if not, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, and I will keep you guys updated. So guys, here we are up under the dash. Here's the steering wheel to give you reference. Here's the center panel. This is the knee bolster panel under the steering wheel on the driver's side. The center piece here around the instrument cluster in the middle overlaps this piece right here by a little bit and you have to remove this panel under the steering wheel that's held in by one little Phillips head screw here and then it should come right out unless there's other screws up alongside on the door jam here but it looks like that should be the only thing we have to remove is that one screw over here and then we should be able to get this piece moved just enough so we can get this center cover out. So now I am gonna go and disconnect the battery here because we are working in close proximity to that knee bolster airbag. So I wanna be able to disconnect this so there's no risk of any airbag discharging while we're working under the dash. So we removed all those screws to here and the one underneath for this panel and it's able to just slide down a little bit. Once you get that removed, there is one screw right here that is part of this panel that has to be removed so you can get this slid forward and out of the car. So we're gonna get that taken out and then this whole bezel will come right out. So this panel's loose now, guys. What we're gonna have to do now is go back up front and reconnect the battery so we can put the ignition in run and be able to move this shifter back. This is an electronic ignition and it does not work even with the key. See, I can put it in here and we can move it to run and we'll press the brake and you're unable to move this without taking this apart and manually tripping it off, which I'm not willing to do. I'll just go reconnect the battery and then we'll be able to move this shifter back because you can see with it up all the way, 
it doesn't give enough clearance for this whole large bezel to come out and I don't want to risk damaging or scratching the shifter or any of the controls here in trying to get it out without moving the shifter back. So we're going to go up, reconnect that shifter, and then come back in and or reconnect that battery, I mean, and then come back in and move the shifter and we'll be able to get this piece right out of the way. So there we have it, we got the main connector for the climate control and the radio controls disconnected. That's this big plug right here. All you do for that is depress this little black tab right here and this blue lock will spin back this way and it'll automatically disconnect it from the control unit for you. We also got the cigarette lighter plug removed. It's just a simple push tab, you depress it and the connector slides right out. So now we are able to get this whole unit out of the way and we can set that aside and take a look at what else we've got in here see if we have any other fasteners holding the center console in it looks like we've got two phillips head screws one right here and one right here and that looks to be all for the moment so this seems to be a pretty easy center console to get removed so we're gonna go back in and get the rest of those things taken out we got the shifter moved back here we can now move this around and we have the battery disconnected again. So like I mentioned, we have to get it out of the park lock, but once you can do that, you can move it around uh, as long as you don't put it back into park when you don't have the battery connected. So there it is guys, the center console is out of the way. I'm not going to remove anything else here and I'm not going to be removing the entire console from the vehicle because there are cables here that run to the USB and the audio input that are in the console here and I don't want to have to unwire the entire harness that runs all the way up through here and it's clipped in all the way through the center console on the right side here. So I'm going to leave that as it is but this gives us full access to what we need to replace. So this parking brake handle will be removed by just a couple nuts here held in in the front. There should be one over here as well, right back here. And we're just gonna remove these cables from the actual lever itself. And this assembly should come right out and we'll throw in the new one.
old park and brake handle guys. Now we're just gonna reverse the process and install the new one back in the car after we do a little cleanup. Looks like somebody spilled some Coca-Cola or something down the center console of this car in its past life. So we're gonna get that cleaned up as well as remove any dust and dirt that's hiding out under that console before we put it back together. So guys, we got all the parts we need now. Now it's time to jump back inside and start reassembling that interior. So there you have it guys, the center console is fully reinstalled and all the trim pieces are reinstalled on the dash as well. All the wiring is plugged up and everything works properly. 
You can see the new park and brake handle we installed works beautifully as I just showed before this clip. Be sure when you're replacing this parking brake handle to tighten the nut on the threaded cable at the back of the parking brake assembly that's inside the console. You saw me do it in the time lapse that I recorded. I found it to be about an inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter or so from the end of the threaded cable. So be sure you adjust that properly so you have accurate functionality of your parking brake. So that is going to be the end of today's video, you guys. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please feel free to like the video and share it with anybody that might enjoy it. We got many more updates coming on this car as we continue putting the rest of the interior back together, so please feel free to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on anything that's to come. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching, and have an awesome day.